The 4 plus 1 model presents one way to break down the modeling of an entire system into a series of views. Another way is in terms of the static and dynamic characteristics of a system. This movie defines the static and dynamic aspects of a system and shows which UML diagrams best model these aspects. In addition, we'll talk about the implementation aspect of a system, which is really a subset of the static model. So let's define our terms. Static models show the structural characteristics of the system. Dynamic models show the behavioral characteristics of the system. And implementation models, which, as I said, are a subset of static models, show the elements required for deployment of the system. We'll look at each of these in turn. Static models show the system's structure. So a static model illustrates the overall structure of the system or some part of it. A static model emphasizes the parts that make up the system. Use static models to define class names, attributes, method signatures, and packages. And UML diagrams that represent static models include class diagrams, which you'll see a lot of, object diagrams, and also use case diagrams. A dynamic model, on the other hand, shows the system's behavior. For example, a dynamic model might show how the system behaves in response to external events. A dynamic model lets you identify the objects that your system needs and how those objects work together through methods and messages. And you should use dynamic models to design the logic and the behavior of the system. UML diagrams that represent dynamic models include sequence diagrams and communication diagrams, which are both types of interaction diagrams. They also include state diagrams and activity diagrams. Now, implementation models, as I said, are a specialized kind of static models. And the implementation model shows the different elements a system requires for deployment. It shows the organization of physical software components and other physical resources, such as hardware and connection paths. UML diagrams that represent implementation models include component diagrams and deployment diagrams, and often you'll find these classified under static diagrams because, again, implementation models are a subset of that kind of diagram. So, static versus dynamic. Which model is best for which situation? Static diagrams, and especially class diagrams, give developers detailed information about classes, data types, parameters, and namespaces. You'll often find class diagrams referred to as the backbone of your UML model, so these are very important. Dynamic diagrams, such as sequence and communication diagrams, help you to define objects in your system and how they interact. Don't skimp on the dynamic diagrams. Because a lot of people associate UML diagrams with class diagrams, there's a danger of overlooking, for example, the interaction diagrams, the sequence and communication diagrams, but these are very important in designing the logic and the behavior of your system, identifying objects, showing how these objects must interact in various ways. Dynamic diagrams are equally important. An agile modeling practice recommends developing models in parallel, working on static and dynamic models at the same time. And this is really the best way to approach modeling of your system.